Here is a recent dump find. This is the Pioneer A450R stereo integrated amplifier from around 1991. Looking at this, we can already see some potential trouble. Something got spilled all over this and it's a bit of a mess. Also, this was owned by a smoker, so it's going to need a lot of cleaning. The top cover has been removed to reveal another mess. Quite a bit of dust on this side. Much worse, however, on this side, the drink dripped down into the unit and we have plenty of corrosion on this circuit board. There is some more corrosion all the way down there. Might not be able to see that. The main fuse is blown. So there is definitely something wrong in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to the air compressor and blow this out. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the legs of the output transistors and measure them to see whether or not we have any problems in the output stage. And that's the last one of the output transistors that checked fine. So now that I know that the power amplifier is most likely fine and therefore not the reason for the blown main fuse, I can move on to this disaster. Now I'm not sure, but it does seem like some of the fluid actually is burned. So maybe the drink dripped into here and caused some arcing and that's why the main fuse blew up. So I'll have to uh, take this section apart. This amplifier was definitely not designed with serviceability in mind, at least not the power supply section. Well, as you can see, I have the circuit board finally taken out. Now, the problem is that it slides into these rails on either side, and they are part of the front. And in order to be able to slide the circuit board out, you have to free up the whole entire front unit, and in order to free up the front unit, you actually have to take apart the whole entire faceplate because there are some hidden screws behind that. Also, you have to uh, free up this uh, front panel to take out the screws that hold the power switch in place. Anyway, I've done all that. Uh, another problem with these connectors, you have to push down on them to release the cable. There is no pulling or anything like that. You have to push down. Well, that took a while to figure out. Anyway, so here is the circuit board and the good news is on the back it is in really good condition. So I'm quite optimistic that uh, once I got this cleaned off it's going to work again. The circuit board has been cleaned and some components have been removed in order to do so. Unfortunately, it turns out that the damage is much more severe. I first thought it was only the liquid that had burned, but the arcing that it cured actually burned the circuit board itself. And this is a pretty serious problem. Measuring the resistance across a clean part of the circuit board, just as you'd expect, we get an open circuit. Measuring the resistance of the trace that has been burned into the circuit board, we get a resistance of only 14 ohms. So that's pretty much a short. So the circuit board will have to be modified to take these burned sections out of the circuit completely because they don't work anymore, obviously. Now this board serves a couple of purposes. There is a mains coming in from the back and through the power switch it supplies the primary of the main transformer with power. There is also this little transformer. This gets mains power and it supplies the standby and remote control circuitry. 
These connectors all belong to the remote control circuitry, so definitely these connectors will have to stay. And then there is a little diode and resistor and the relay. And basically when the unit is turned on, the small transformer supplies power to the relay and the relay then turns on the main transformer. If you switch this whole thing into standby, the amplifier, the power coming from this transformer to the relay is cut, so the relay goes open and that turns off the main transformer. So when the unit is in standby, you only have the small transformer powering the standby and remote control circuitry. So basically, since this section with the relay is burned, what I'll have to do is uh, I'll get rid of the relay that cannot be saved and I will have to do some different routing with the mains wiring coming in from the back and going out to the transformer and the power switch and of course also the main transformer and I should be able to isolate this part of the circuit board completely so in the future the amplifier should work again minus the standby feature. That's going to be bypassed. The circuit board has been modified. Some components are missing, some connectors are missing, and on the bottom I used a Dremel tool to break some of the traces. The burned section connects this part to this part and this part to that part. So I disconnected this part this is going to be disconnected entirely and I also made sure to disconnect this section although I guess it wouldn't really matter if I disconnected everything from this part but better be safe. Quick intervention while editing this video I had a much better idea with the trace burned into the circuit board making a connection here and here it would have been a much better idea to use the Dremel tool to apply a cut all the way through the circuit board to create an air gap here and here. That would have repaired the circuit board and I would have been able to keep the standby feature intact. I would have had to replace the relay which was burned, but that would have been it. Before putting this part of the amplifier back together, I'd also like to take a closer look at the circuit board all the way down there. This has the headphone jack and the speaker selectors on it, as well as some pretty nasty looking corrosion. And the next circuit board has been taken care of, as you can hopefully see. I redid the solder joints, cleaned up everything. I also went and got some contact cleaner into these switches. The circuit board is back in its place. It has been rewired, as you can see. So now comes the moment of truth. I installed a new 2.5 ampere fuse. So let me first apply power to the unit itself. Well, that was successful. Let's now go ahead and turn the unit on. Is this on? It is. Well, I'm not hearing any relays click, so that's not good. There should be a speaker protection relay. Uh, turning on the speakers doesn't do anything, so seems like we have some sort of a problem in here, other than the power wiring. 